Hi, welcome to Right to the Top. I'm Adam. In today's video, we're going to talk about IELTS TOEFL essay writing. And more specifically, we're going to look at the topic sentence. This is a very, very important part of your writing toolkit. And this is where also a lot of people lose points, especially in terms of uh, cohesion and coherence. The topic sentence is what you use to basically organize your ideas, to organize your essay, and to help the reader follow your train of thought. So we're going to look at that. We're going to look at some good examples and some bad examples. And I'll give you some tips on how to write a good topic sentence. So first thing to understand, every body paragraph in your essay must begin with a topic sentence. Now, th this video is especially targeting IELTS and TOEFL uh, test takers who are going to write short essays, two, three hundred, like three, four hundred word essays. If you're writing a long academic essay or if you're writing in a different style of uh, writing, like not an essay or not an academic essay, you have a lot more flexibility with your topic sentence. But for the test, when you have a short essay, the topic sentence is very important and generally pretty standard, okay? So make sure that every body paragraph has one. Now, the introduction paragraph, you're just getting into your topic. That's your, there's no really, there's no topic sentence because you're not, or you're not developing an idea in your introduction. You're presenting a thesis. In your conclusion, you're presenting a summary. So when you say, in conclusion, comma, that is essentially your topic sentence. But in the body paragraph, very important to have one. Now, what is the function of the topic sentence? To guide the reader as to what to expect in the paragraph. And this is very important to remember. Your topic, sen uh, your topic sentence is telling the reader what is the focus, what is the focal point of this paragraph. And if you tell the reader that this is the focal point, but then you don't focus on that particular item, you're making the reader confused, and in, in terms of the IELTS or TOEFL, you're actually losing points. Now, I'm going to go through a, a bunch of do's and don'ts, but the main thing, the most important thing I want you to remember about writing and about paragraphs. One paragraph has one central topic, one main focus, and that main focus should be made very clear in your topic sentence. Think of it as an umbrella sentence. Essentially, you have your topic sentence, which looks like this. It covers basically everything that comes underneath it. It is connected to the thesis itself of the whole essay, but it has its own ideas and everything. Everything that you write in that paragraph is following, flowing from the topic sentence and focusing on the main idea, supporting it, elaborating on it, giving examples, and then it all ties together and then reconnects back to the overall thesis of the essay. So it looks like a bit of an umbrella. It covers everything, very focused. Everything is very narrowed uh, approach. That's the main thing you want to remember. Now, some do's and don'ts. Don't make the sentence too long. I've seen, I've seen some essays where basically they, almost the whole paragraph is the first sentence, and then maybe there's one more sentence. That is not a good topic sentence. It should be short. Now, you can have different lengths, and I'm going to show you a few, uh, a couple of different examples, but try to keep it more general. And the more general it is, the shorter it can be. Get to the point quickly. I've seen a lot of people that in their topic uh, sentence, they reintroduce the debate that was given in the introduction. Don't tell me that some people think this. You already told me that in the introduction. Don't tell me that some people think that. You already told me that. And do not give me your opinion again. You're, in your introduction, you said, in my opinion, or I believe, or I agree. That's it. That's all you need to do. Don't tell me again. Don't give me another opinion statement, especially in the topic sentence. Because then, as the reader, I think that you're giving me a new opinion, and you're going to support that new opinion. But I already know your opinion from the introduction. One essay, one opinion statement. That's it. And don't get into the details. There are situations where you can do that, but I'll show you those uh, separately. Another thing, if you're going to have subtopics, then put those in the topic sentence. But don't put any subtopic. Now, when I say subtopic, you're going to talk about like the main reason for something is. So the main reason, that's your focus, is A and B. 
or the main reasons are A and B. So A and B are your subtopics. But I've seen many people, what they do is they give me a topic sentence and they give me a, one or two or even three subtopics and then they never go back to those subtopics. They never talk about them at all in the paragraph. As the reader, when I read that topic sentence, everything that you include in that topic sentence, I expect to see expanded on, elaborated on in the body. If you don't do that, then I just keep looking back. Well, where is it? Why did you mention it in the topic sentence? If you're not going to talk about it in the body paragraph, don't put it into your topic sentence. In fact, don't put it anywhere unless it comes up later. Follow with an elaboration, not an example. I see many times as well a topic sentence that's kind of long, and then the next sentence begins with, for example. But example of what? You haven't elaborated on anything. You haven't explained anything. You've only introduced the focus of the paragraph. There's nothing to give an example of yet. Give your topic, expand, elaborate, support it, then give me an example to put it all together. Okay? I'm going to look at an example here. Regarding some people's belief that prohibiting cars from entering the city's main commercial area is a good idea, I believe the main reason for this is to keep the air clean, thereby attracting more pedestrian traffic and helping local shop owners attract more customers. And then the next sentence, for example. So a whole bunch of problems in this sentence. One, way too long. You're already halfway through your body paragraph, so you have to shorten it. Next, some people's belief that, well, you already should have told me this in the introduction. If you didn't, then you didn't set up the introduction properly. If you did, then there's no need to repeat it here. What the graders might think is that you're just trying to get the word count up. Just trying to fill up words without actually saying much. Get rid of that. The, uh, from the city's main commercial area is a good idea, etc. I believe. You already told me what you believe in your thesis statement. You don't need to tell me something else you believe. Just get to the point. Now here, this is what the sentence is about. The main reason for something. So that's okay. Next, you have clean air. You have pedestrian traffic. Traffic. You have local shop owners. You have way too much information. There's no way that you can cover all three points in a short paragraph. Take one of them out. Take the local shop owners, put them in the next paragraph if you want to. Don't try to say too much. Have one or two central ideas and develop them fully. And you'll get much, a uh, much better score and if you try to say so many different ideas and none of them are working to support your thesis. Then, finally, for example, again, example of what? You haven't actually told me anything yet. You just told me what are some reasons. You told me how the, uh, these reasons affect uh, whatever, prohibiting cars. You didn't tell me how they're effective, why you think these are good reasons, etc. There's nothing to give an example of. Here, you need to elaborate. You need to explain to me the topics you mentioned in the topic sentence. Let's look at this uh, sentence. Oh, quite busy now. Okay, here's a better sentence. The main reason for prohibiting cars from entering the city's main commercial area is having cleaner air and thereby increased foot traffic. I'm getting right to the point. I'm telling you, I'm going to talk about the main reason, and I'm going to tell you those two main reasons, only two. And then in the next sentence, I'm going to start explaining. As no cars means no emissions, dot, dot, dot. No cars, no emissions, like no fumes coming out of the car means cleaner air, and I'm explaining how you get the cleaner air and why this is good. Next, and I see this very commonly as well. Do not begin the second paragraph as though the first one is irrelevant. I've seen a lot of people begin their second paragraph completely forgetting the first one. There's absolutely no connection. Make sure that you, when you begin your second paragraph, there's a transition, and the, the graders are very specifically looking for that. It doesn't have to be a transition phrase, but there has to be some link to the previous sentence. You have to guide the reader. You have to tell them, okay, look, now I'm shifting focus to a new subtopic or a new point or a new argument or whatever you're doing there, right? So if you begin, like, we're looking at the same essay about prohibiting cars. Second body paragraph, prohibiting vehicles in a downtown core will not only negatively affect tourism, it will also impact the local economy. Where did tourism come into it? Where did the local economy come? You were just talking about the positive uh, aspects of prohibiting cars. You can't suddenly switch 
without preparing the reader for that shift in, uh, in focus. So, a better way? Conversely, an argument can be made that forbidding cars from entering dot dot dot. Conversely, you have a transition automatically from that first word. I know that now you're going to be looking at the other side of the argument. Okay, so do that. This sentence, the prohibiting, the one I just showed you before, this would be an excellent topic sentence for the first body paragraph. You're just diving right into your argument, not for the second body paragraph. Next, a lot of people begin uh, their essay, their body paragraphs in a very similar way. To begin with, firstly, in regard to, these are all fine, nothing wrong with them. Just understand that the person next to you is probably using it also. And the person on the other side of you, probably using this expression as well. If you can avoid it, avoid it. If you're panicking, if you're running out of time, then yeah, just use it. But just understand that the graders are seeing this 10, 20 times a, a day when they're marking. If you can avoid it, avoid it. Just get to the point, the main reason, essential argument. Or like I said with the other one, prohibiting cards. Just get to the actual idea itself and transitions. Secondly, another reason, on the other hand, that being said, just make sure you put something to link the second body to the first. Let's look at some examples. So this is from a, an essay sent to me. The principal reason for giving diet information at home is that children are likely to mimic the habits of their parents. Perfect topic sentence. I know you're talking about the main reason. You're talking about the topic itself, giving diet information at home. Children mimic parents. That's what you're going to argue with. And then the rest of the essay, talking about parents as role models, they have meals together, they take the lead, healthy habits, and then the children can pass it on. Perfect body paragraph. Let's look at the next one. Sorry, it's a bit long. I don't want you to read all of it. I want you to focus on the top. On the other hand, a disadvantage of a global language is that all other languages would eventually disappear. Very good topic sentence, except for one problem. Nowhere in the rest of the paragraph does the writer mention the word languages even again, except right at the, at the bottom there. But he doesn't talk about the disappearance of him. He's just talking about the universal language. So good topic sentence, but then doesn't follow through. It doesn't, doesn't mention the disappearance of languages anywhere in the body paragraph. In that case, it's either a bad body or a bad topic sentence. How would you fix it? This extinction of languages will soon be followed by the loss of cultural diversity. And from the loss of cultural diversity, I can go on to talk about that. But first, make sure that you, whatever is in your topic sentence is developed in your body. Another thing I want you also to point out, if you can see it here, there's one sentence here. This certainly, okay, let me just know. This certainly will result in a collapse of the tourism industry and it will affect some nations economically. This sentence has no business in this paragraph. Take it out. You didn't mention tourism. You didn't mention economy in your topic sentence. You didn't mention it anywhere else. This sentence sticks out to the greater very much. You're losing point because cohesion, coherence, you've lost the connection. Now, a very good way to make sure you get the right topic sentence and all that is in your introduction, say, my reasons for this, so I believe A or B, my reasons for this are practical and social. You have a very general statement of reasons, and then it's very easy to go back to that in your topic sentence. From the practical standpoint, there's your topic sentence. This is what this paragraph is uh, looking about, uh, talking about. The construction, and then you get into your points. Everything's good. Everything's practical. In the second one, uh, on the social, uh, from the social perspective, and then we give the social, and then easy, very uh, straightforward topic sentences. Here's another example. First of all, this is one sentence. To begin with, we only live once, and young people would probably never have such an opportunity again in their lives to have so long a vacation, da, da, da. This person just gets into the details. He's explaining too many things. Vacation, education at university, time, graduation, hard work, too much information. First, set me up to what you're going to talk about, then develop your answer. A better way to begin with, an opportunity like this comes just once in a lifetime. Comes once in a lifetime. That's fine. And then you get into the explanation of whatever you want. So basically, what I did is I cut that long one into different parts. Just once in a lifetime, a little bit cliche, an even better one. For most people, the gap year is a rare opportunity. 
I'm going to talk about the gap year. I'm going to talk about the opportunity. That's my general topic sentence, and then I get into the details. On the one hand, fixed punishments would be very beneficial, but only for some small crimes, such as, and then too many details here. You want to keep it simple. You want to get your details in your elaboration, okay? And then the rest of this sentence, because it's a long sentence, the rest of the paragraph only had one more sentence. You don't want to be doing that. You should be having three, four, five sentences in a paragraph. A better, on the one hand, establishing set fines or public duties on minor crimes may have several benefits. I'm going to be talking about benefits. On the other hand, if you have on the one, make sure you have on the other. Determining fixed punishments for all crimes is unrealistic. And then I'm going to explain why it's unrealistic. Keep them general. Keep the details to the elaboration. And that's it. Very straightforward. I know it's not easy, but the more complicated or the more sophisticated you try to make your topic sentence, the more you're confusing your reader. Make it simple, make it straightforward, leave the details, leave the examples, leave the everything else to the support, second, third, fourth, fifth sentence. Now, if you have any questions, please ask me in the YouTube comment section. Uh, if you like the video, please give me a like. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll be giving you more tips on IELTS and TOEFL writing. And come back for my next video. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.